matter how you came, you won't be the same unless it's in store for you. Blessings on the way. Amen. Amen. Church, we start the month when we remember our ancestors in faith. And as we gather today, we are in communion with all the saints and all with all our ancestors. We offer this sacrifice as we start in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our God is a God of life, not a God of the dead. So we come claiming life the life that God has given us. But we do that with humility and love for God and for one another. For the times we falter, we ask for pardon. We say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of all the living, in the resurrection of Christ Jesus, you have given us the life which even death cannot destroy. Remember your unshakable promise and strengthen us to live in this world as a new creation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, you accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life. But the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdained them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
my steps are fast in your path. My feet have halted not. I call and you answer me. Incline your ear to me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace. Encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified as it did among you and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people. For not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord, that what we instruct you, you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The word of the Lord.
Christ is the firstborn, the firstborn of the dead. To Him be glory and power forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brothers. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman, but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now, at the resurrection, whose wife will be that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, the children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attend to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage they can no longer die for they are like angels and they are the children of god because there are those the one who will rise that the dead will rise even moses made known in the passage about the bush when he called out lord the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob and he is not god of the dead but of the living for to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord.
gonna be ready. I'm Many scholars refer to this as slave religion, such as Albert Rabito, an Al, uh, African American born into a Catholic family and who attended Catholic parochial schools in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He wrote a book of the same name, subtitled The Invisible Institution in the Antebellum South. Now, what the slave religion was essentially was a reinterpretation of the white Christianity that declared the role of blacks was to be enslaved and that it was God's will that they be slaves and faithfully serve their white masters. But our ancestors understood this to be false and instead understood that it was God's will that all human beings be free. You see, they heard this and determined that God was a God of the oppressed. Theologian James Cone developed a theory that he called the transcendent present. Now, in this theory, he suggests that enslaved Africans combined their understanding of heaven, God's will that they be free, and decided it was their responsibility to partner with God in realizing their own liberation. 
They understood that they did not need to wait until they died and went to heaven. No, no, no. They could be free now by claiming their own agency and taking steps to realize their freedom in the existential here and now. In other words, freedom now. So dedicated to their own freedom, some of our African ancestors decided to take their own lives during the Middle Passage rather than live a life of enslavement. In a similar way, our first reading tells a story of our Jewish brothers and sisters who were so committed to the faith of their ancestors, they determined rather than transgress the law of God, they would willingly give their lives. I wonder today how many of us have this level of faith, this level of commitment to be authentically black and truly Catholic, that we would give our lives for what we believe. Now, I'm not saying that black Catholics should die and give their physical lives, breathing, breathing lives for the faith, but what level of commitment are you willing to make for the right to live out your faith authentically as black Catholics? For what are you willing to stand to sacrifice? It has been said that those who are not willing to stand for something are willing to fall for anything. Anything such as in order to be truly Catholic, you need to renounce your blackness because it's not Catholic. Uh, so, by the way, do you know what Friday is this Friday? Y'all know? Well, it is November 11th. So it's also, it's, it's Veterans Day. Did you know that? This Friday is Veterans Day. So please remember to honor all of our, our veterans and those who have sacrificed to keep our country safe. It's also the premiere of Black Panther Wakanda forever. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know about you, but I am psyched, okay? Because this movie promises to be a movie of colossal proportions. You know, Prince Namor and the underwater kingdom of Atlantis. Princess Shuri likely taking over the role of Black Panther. Come on, somebody. It's about to be all that on Friday. And, and if you listen in the premieres, you can hear Angela Bassett said, say to them, show them who we are. Yeah, yeah? Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm an MCU geek, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Now that line though, show them who we are. It reminds me of a line in Disney's The Lion King. Now, now, spoil alert and shame on you if you haven't seen it yet. King Mufasa dies, right? Giving his life for both, for, for the life of his son, Simba, who's run away and is afraid to face the responsibility of what has happened in the kingdom and his ultimate role as the new king. It takes Rafiki, the character who is essentially a griot, a keeper of the history of the people and respected elder in the community. And, and Rafiki forces him to face his demons. And when Rafiki does confront Simba and forces him to confront his past and embrace his future, all of his responsibilities as the true king and leader of his people, he utters this classic phrase, remember who you are. Claiming your inheritance, walking into your future, sometimes requires that you embrace your past, your history, all that has contributed to who you are today, who you've become, who you're destined to be. In order to walk into your destiny, to be your true, authentic self, who God created you to be, you must embrace all of your history, every aspect of your being. It requires that you remember who you are. 
I'm reminded of some very important words boldly uttered to the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops in 1989 by our sister, servant of God, Sister Thea Bowman. She said, now famously, what does it mean to be black and Catholic? It means that I come to my church fully functioning. Uh, that doesn't frighten you, does it? Uh, I bring myself, my black self, all that I am, all that I have, all that I hope to become. I bring my whole history, my traditions, my experience, my culture, my African-American song and dance and gesture and movement and teaching and preaching and healing and responsibility as gift to the church. Ah, sisters and brothers, those are some powerful words. How many of us feel intimidated by those words? How many of our black sisters and brothers feel intimidated by those words? I, I, I get it. Those are some bold, fierce claims. Though, those are some powerful words, yeah. Maybe some of us are thinking, do I really have all of that? Uh, 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 is all of that a part of who I am? You, you might be thinking, I don't want to offend anybody. I, I don't want to act like I'm better than anyone. Uh, but why should your giftedness be offensive to anyone? Why should you walking in your gifts make anyone think or feel you're too big, too much, taking up too much oxygen? Well, I confess I have thought like that. I have thought that about myself until I was challenged to own my voice in the space, to be who God created me to be. For you see, in one sense, not to be all God has created you to be is to dishonor God, to hide your light under a bushel. You know, I recall watching this movie starring Samuel L. Jackson called Coach Carter. It, it came out in 2005. Well, Jackson plays the role of real life basketball coach Ken Carter who I'm informed uh, uh, taught and grew up not too far from here. Did I hear that this morning? Amen, all right. Well, he's working at a struggling high school and Coach Carter builds his team into a group of successful basketball players, but even more into good students who go on to achieve great things in life. One student who struggles with the demands that Coach Carter makes of the players quits. But eventually he comes back asking to be on the team again. In one pivotal moment, he recites these words of inspiration by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We, we, we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Sister Thea said, I bring myself, my black self, as gift to the church. Bringing all of who we are as black Catholics to the church is our duty and responsibility. 
1969, Pope Paul VI spoke to the people of Uganda and said to them, you must now give your gifts of blackness to the whole church. Amen. Well, in the document, what we have seen and heard, a pastoral letter on evangelization from the black bishops of the United States, our black bishops give a more complete quote from Pope Paul who said, if you are able to avoid the possible dangers of religious pluralism, the danger of making your Christian profession into a kind of local folklore, or into exclusivist racism, or into egotistic tribalism or arbitrary separatism, then you will be able to remain sincerely African even in your own interpretation of the Christian life. You will be able to formulate Catholicism in terms congenial to your own culture. You will be capable of bringing to the Catholic Church the precious and original contribution of negritude, which she needs particularly in this hour. And dare I say what was true in 1969 is still true in 19, uh, 2022. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, remember who you are. Now, how can we be a gift to the church if we don't know who we are? If we don't remember what our gifts are? I remind you, Sister Thea said, I bring myself, my black self, all that I am, all that I have, all that I hope to become. I bring my whole history, my traditions, my experience, my culture, my African-American song and dance and gesture and movement and teaching and preaching and healing and responsibility as gift to the church. That means for African Americans in this country, we need to trace this all the way back to our beginnings with slavery in America. America's original sin. Now don't act like you don't know, because even the Catholic Church acknowledges that racism is a sin, and that slavery was a sinful act, one in which it has participated there were priests that owned slaves. Bishop Shelton J. Fabra, the chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Ad Hoc Committee Against Racism, well, he described a plan for, the reparation, for, for reparations in the amount of $1 million, acknowledging it as the church's largest financial commitment to heal the wounds caused by its participation in slavery. It was the sale of enslaved Africans who kept the doors open at Georgetown University. Slaves that were owned by Jesuit priests. Now, from this crucible of slavery, we have the gift of Negro spirituals. This music is uniquely American, the nation's first original music. And it came from us. The spirituals gave birth to blues and jazz and gospel, rock and roll, R&B and hip hop. This music is our heritage. It's our gift to the world and to the church. We ought to be singing it more. This is what it means to bring our whole history our traditions and experience and culture. We are descendants of African people. We are inheritors of African culture and traditions. You know, scholars call these African retentions. Our love of family, our, our, our reverence for the word of God. Oh, come on now, Sister Mark, you, you, were, you, were, you read my sermon before I got here. Uh, our reverence for elders and ancestors, our strong sense of community, our antiphonal engagement or call and response, the way we sing, the way we move, the way we dance and speak, this is all African. We are an African diasporic people.
Almost everything we do has rhythm, my brother. It, it comes from our relationship to the drum. Because you see, the drum is sacred in African culture. It is spiritual. Every aspect of life in African cosmology is sacred. Who among us of African descent is not compelled to move even a little when you hear a beat? W w whether it's the foot tapping or the body swaying or finger snapping or the head bopping, something's got to move. Come on, somebody. Our, our spirituals, our Negro spirituals, those are songs of deliverance, songs of resistance, songs of hope, songs of heaven, songs of freedom. This music sustained our ancestors. The songs encouraged them when they thought about giving up. Not only did they sing about God as a healer, and able to wash away their sins in the song Wade in the Water, but they let each other know that if they went through water when they escaped, well, the slave catcher's dogs wouldn't be able to detect their scent. You see, our ancestors were ingenious and resourceful. When Massa told them that to be a good Christian was to serve their masters, they understood and figured out that who the Son has set free is free indeed. And, and, and when the, the, the slave owners told them that the Bible says slaves obey your masters, well, then they turned around and sang, everybody talking about heaven ain't going. During the Great Depression, when the country's economy was going to hell in a handbasket, well, Thomas Dorsey helped us to sing, the Lord will make a way somehow. When the weight of the world got to be a little too much to bear, well, Charles Albert Tinley taught us to sing, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. When the Lord brought us through one trial and the next, our sister Clara Ward sang for us our testimony. My soul looks back and wonders how I got over. Uh, we joined Abraham, the father of faith, who trusted in God and received the promise. And, and then Albert Goodson helped us to sing, we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh! Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Sisters and brothers, ours is a gift of faith. Trusting in God. Our songs are songs of hope. The testimony of our ancestors and of our community. Some of this country's greatest orators, teachers, and preachers come from the black church. The black community, people like Samuel Proctor, James Cone, James Forbes, Cornell West, Martin Luther King Jr., Barack Obama, Father Clarence Joseph Rufus Rivers, Monsignor Ray East, and my pastor and your pastor, the father, the Reverend Father James E. Good, OFM. PhD. Black preachers knew how to stir the hearts and minds of their community in the antebellum South. And the tradition still lives today. Sisters and brothers, remember who you are. We bring our teaching and preaching and healing and responsibility as gift to the church. We know what it is to be hurt and to find healing in the arms of Jesus. So when the prophet Jeremiah posed the question, is there no balm in Gilead? Well, our ancestors replied in the affirmative, there is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole and to heal the sin sick soul. Even when the church didn't show us no love, I know that's not correct in grammar, but you know, I'm, when the church didn't show us no love, told us to gather in the balcony or in the basement or not at all, we still came. 
We have been faithful in our commitment to the church and in our service to Jesus, our King. See, that's why the 2011 Notre Dame study found that 48.2% of African American Catholics attend church at least once a week compared to only 30.4% of whites. We, we understand that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a redeemed people, and that our participation in the sacred liturgy is our right and our duty by reason of our baptism. Don't tell me that we don't have a right to be here, not when St. Augustine, doctor of the church, was black. When, when there were three popes of the early church who were African, when the early church has its roots in Africa, when one of the first Catholics to reach the New World was Esteban, an Arabian black, Spanish-speaking slave in 1536, when St. Augustine Parish in Florida is the site of the oldest black Catholic community dating back to 1784, when religious life among black Catholics began in Kentucky in 1824 with a community of three black free women then associated with the sisters of Laredo I'd say we have a right to be here in 1984 our black bishops stated that our spiritual gifts are fourfold we are contemplative holistic joyful and communitarian in other words our prayer and our prayer lives are spontaneous and, and ever present within our tradition. We recognize that God is omnipresent and we can pray to God anytime or any place. We've learned to depend on God and on the everlasting arms. We know what it means to let go and let God. We understand by way of our African ancestry that there is no dualism in black spirituality. There, there is no division or tension for us between intellect and emotion, spirit and body, action and contemplation, individual and community, and between the Western concept of sacred and secular. We embrace it all and bring this fullness with us into the liturgy, all of who we are, our whole black selves. I, I was gonna stop here and teach all this song I wrote, but I'm gonna keep going. Check out all of me, my ode to Sister Thea. That's what it's all about. The black bishops in what we have seen and heard say that black spirituality is joyful. It's, it's in our celebration. It is movement and song, rhythm and feeling, color and sensation, exultation and thanksgiving. We're glad to be in the service one more time. We take the words of the psalmist literally when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, we love God's word. And, and don't start a favorite passage like, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, that's not yours. What about now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen seen or what about but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus or what about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and if none of those how about this one that I learned when I was a child the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want Black spirituality is communal. In African culture, Ubuntu, yes sir, I takes its meaning in the we. Individual identity is found in the context of community. We understand that I am because you are. We all exist together. So when we sing, I am on the battlefield for my Lord, though an individual may lead it, they express the sentiment of the entire community. And we all join in, whether in voice or in spirit. So, brothers and sisters, remember who you are. Remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you black and you have chosen to be Catholic. 
to worship God in spirit and in truth. You are a resilient and strong people. You are here today because your ancestors survived the journey across the Atlantic that four out of five never made it through. You are here today because when the church said no, God said yes. You are here today because Augustus Tolton survived all the resistance the church threw at him and was ordained a priest in Rome in 1886. You are here today because while a slave, Pierre Toussaint, cared for his sick mistress and showed true Christian compassion for those that despised him and treated him poorly, you are here today because a girl from Yazoo, Mississippi spoke truth to power and told a group of white bishops that she was going to bring her entire black self to a church she loved, whether they liked it or not. You are here today because someone marched on Selma to the nation's capital and declared that he had a dream. You are here today because someone prayed for you, had you on their mind, took a little time and prayed for you. Aren't you glad they prayed you're here today because someone preached a sermon that changed your life and you're here today because 2,000 years ago someone stretched his arms out wide and hung his head bled and died but I'm so glad that's not how the story ends because scripture has it that three days later he rose again with all power in his hands he ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the father he's coming back to judge the living and the dead and if we're still here that means he's coming back for you and 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 for, you and for me too <laughs> hallelujah our ancestors said king jesus rides a milk white horse and the river of jordan he did cross ride on king jesus because no man cannot hinder me so be proud and unashamed to be your authentic self, your authentically black self, and your truly, fully Catholic self. Remember who you are. And I leave you with these words that I once heard Father James Good preach. He said, be what you is and not what you ain't. Because if you ain't what you is, then you is what you ain't. Amen. We thank God, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. You ain't what you is. <laughs> so let us offer, thank you so much, thank you so much. Let, uh, let us make a profession of faith as we pray. I believe in none. Lord, my God. Having heard inspirational words, we come before God to offer our petitions. 
wholeheartedly. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of God, the church, that during this Black Catholic History Month, we might uncover and celebrate the gift of Black Catholics to the whole church in hope we pray. For all our saints in waiting, we remember Sister Thea Bowman, Mother Mary Lane, Julia Greeley, Venerable Augustus Tolton, Venerable Pierre Toussaint, and Venerable Henriette Philippe and plead for those, for their causes for canonization. In hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth, that by the example of sustainable living of the Ohlone First Peoples of the East Bay, we might live more simply and be instruments of the restoration of our planet. In hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For an end to racism, that our voices be strengthened in the calling out of injustice, and that our parish might lead a challenge to the dismantling of white privilege. In hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all suffering, loss, or grief, we stand with our grieving sisters and brothers who have lost a loved one, especially to violence. We also remember those who have asked for prayer on our parish website. In hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, marked with a sign of faith, we remember Arlington Ashley and Tony Kamla. We remember those who have died within this year at St. Columba. Juanita Harper, Rosemary Kraft, Myrtle Newsom, Lucy Castro, Valerian Millet, J.T. Street, Marie Brown, Gary and Sears, Molly Martin, Elizabeth Mack, Zizi Sears, Marva Dellens, and Marilyn Jackson. In hope, we pray. Lord, 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 Lord. For whom and for what else shall we pray? Roger Holland, I accept the challenge to be my true and authentic self, loving those we come in contact with and love as God calls us to. And I ask at this time for healing for all those who are in need. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for the repose of the soul of my aunt, Beryl Gaudet, who passed away on Friday at the age of 100. She has earned her wings. I also pray for my cousin Patrick, currently fighting cancer, as well as for all of those in the same situation, cancer of any type, and for my friend Sharon, 
who's waiting on the results of her biopsy, that it will come back, no cancer found. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord I would like to pray for the repose of the soul of my cousin's fiance, who tragically lost her life Friday night in a car accident in Redwood City. She leaves behind five children. Her son lost his father when he was three. Now he's lost his mother. I know my cousin is grieving. They were to be married, and I'm, I'm sure he's, his heart is broken. So may light perpetual shine upon them and grant them peace. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Yes, O oh Lord. There's a young man laying in the bed from a gunshot wound, paralyzed. Lord, we ask for your mercy, your kindness, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy, please, Lord. And also, Pray for my family. We're struggling, but I know the Lord is there to pull our hands and keep us walking on the path of that light that our body, heart, and soul would be comforted by his spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. On this coming Tuesday, Election Day, I pray that we all remember that the right to vote isn't something to be taken lightly. Let us remember that the vote can be used as a tool to build or to be mocked and destroy the very essence and fabric of our democracy. Let us approach the booths with an open conscience, to vote our conscience, to be responsible with our vote for this and for future generations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this Black Catholic History Month, it's a good idea to think about a particular Black Catholic saint. Uh, he goes way, way back. He lived in the days of Shakespeare. He lived in Peru. He was a man of mixed heritage. His mother was Black and Native American. His father was a Polish a, 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 a Spanish uh, lord of some kind who quickly disowned his children and left them with their mother. And uh, this saint worked with his sister and, and his mother running the laundry in Lima, Peru and trying to earn what they could. And when he became a teenager, he approached the Dominicans at the Dominican convent and said, I wanna be one of you. And the prior said, you gotta be kidding. You're not a Caucasian. It's against the rules, go. He then said, well, can I get a job here? And he said, yeah, we could use some help. Can you work in the infirmary? Can you work in the kitchen? Can you work cleaning toilets? He said, of course I can. When the monastery began to run low on funds, he said, hey, I got an idea. Why don't you sell me as a slave? You can make some money. The prior, who wouldn't let him join him, at least had thoughts about that. And finally, um, well, almost finally, he uh, worked in the infirmary. He got a promotion. And in the infirmary, he snuck out and went into the novitiate. A novitiate is a like a boot camp for people who want to be religious and they are spending one year in isolation. They're not allowed to go out and they're not allowed to have visitors coming in. And our saint said the hell with that and he went in and served with the sick. One of the sick novices said, I don't know if I want him here because he's a mongrel dog. And finally, uh, when he uh, met a very sick Indian, he gave him his bed and he slept on the floor and the prior gave him a serious reprimand. 
His answer to the prior was, well, I just didn't know that obedience to your rules outranked charity. And uh, he died. And the prior finally recognized that he had something very special. Let us pray that for us, we keep in mind the people of mixed heritage who still today look for justice. And let us try to teach ourselves that when we're given a rule uh, that's kind of ridiculous, we say to the authority, well, I'll think about it. For this, let us pray. Morning, church. I'd like to pray for um, my two neighbors. On Monday, my neighbor to my left fell. Uh, he's a gentleman, about 68 years old. He's been my neighbor for the last eight years. His name is Shelton. On Tuesday morning, the ambulance, fire, and paramedics came and got him. I do not know where he is, and I don't know what his condition is. And then on Wednesday, the neighbor to my right fell. He's a Catholic gentleman that goes to St. Francis Piatti. Um, he was there in the neighborhood when I moved in 27 years ago. He's a wonderful man. I did speak with him, and um, he's at Kaiser Hospital. He has blood clots in his legs. He's having some other internal problems. And um, they're gonna discharge him to a recovery center. I'd also like to pray a special prayer for one of our parishioners' mother, Steve Dorsey. His mother is Margaret Dorsey. She celebrated her 101 uh, year birthday maybe a month ago. And she's waiting on her wings. With this, I pray to the Lord. And I want all people, everyone that's listening, to be careful at home. I know that Venus has fallen. Uh, you don't have to be in a car accident. You don't have to be, you know, you can be injured at home seriously. So be careful, Lord. Hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. I'd like to pray for the food so my dying brother, Dr. David Chip, and I also like to pray in thanksgiving for St. Columba and all the members of St. Joseph's Ball. Pray for me while my eye outbreak was going on. I was blind and I could see, but I thank you very much. Thank you to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to say a prayer for whoever was in the car accident that I passed this morning on 101. The car was like completely smashed in the front and the fire department was there with their equipment to take whoever was in the car. And I'd like to pray for whoever it was that hopefully they didn't pass and that they will recover from whatever injuries they may have sustained. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Um, I'd like to pray for my mom. Um, she's going through some heavy mental health issues. She has depression and she's not eating, she's not um, sleeping, and it's really taking a toll on her health because she also has diabetes. So I just like to pray for her and pray for her recovery and that she's healed soon. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray for the gentleman who, uh, or to the lady I saw earlier this morning, and she uh, was married to a, a coach, a Catholic church, had a son, and the coach who would, you know, train the Catholic boys to play basketball while they get their phones and stuff and things of that nature 
And it was just amazing. I heard this morning she told me that this coach died. He was a young guy when he died. And the son, now who is college age, is going through a number of things, a number of emotional things. And I pray for him, both of them. But I also want to say that, you know, the motto here at St. Columba is not, not only who we are, but whose we are. So we are part, we are part of that God sing community that we all love. And that's why I'm here in Catholic community with you all of us. I pray for the, the United Nations meeting going on right now for um, climate change. I pray that world leaders may get more serious, not small incremental change, but we need to do major change to prevent a complete planet catastrophe. So for all of this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are good. I pray this morning in thanksgiving for M. Roger Hall for making me want to jump up and shout, for reminding me who I am and remembering who I am for the gift. Mr. Holland, I didn't know you were a preacher. I knew you were an amazing musician. But hallelujah, praise God. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence. God is good all the time for this. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Do we have any online prayers? We do not have any online intentions. Brothers and sisters, Rafiki, I just remember I should, I should have. Yeah, Rafiki means friend. Yeah, Kiswahili. So uh, we are friends in the Lord brothers and sisters and as you well said ubuntu is about solidarity which is inclusive so with all this in mind remembering who you is <laughs> i like that i like that <laughs> the peace of the lord be with you always <laughs> brothers and sisters let us offer each other the sign of peace
Lord God, we bring these gifts to you. Bless them. Bless us. May the gifts help you to serve you and help us serve you and lead us to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen.
which hath us given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God. God. Blessed be God to accept this sacrifice which you offer down by the contract. Ask Lord, wash me to taste cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord God, look with favor on the sacrifice we offer, that the passion of your Son, which we celebrate in these mysteries, may become the pattern of our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always endeavor to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. All things are of your making, all times and seasons obey your law. But you fashioned the human family in your own image and set us over the world in all its wonder that we might be stewards of your creation, praising you day by day for the marvels of your might and wisdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the joyful hymn of your praise. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for your consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and gave you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance from your elect, especially to the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, to the blessed Joseph, her spouse, to the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, to St. Columba, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity we are pregnant Church on earth, with your Seven Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, the other of bishops, and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your mercy, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Tony Gamler, and to all who we are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we pray our Father in song. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you be in the name of you. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present. The mystical body of Christ, the church, renew in us your sacrificial presence. Let us be united with you this morning and always, so that in all our thoughts, words, and actions, we may prove in you.
Dear Lord, dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken, and the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making us a part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence and let us be united with you at this moment and always so that in all our thoughts, words, and actions, we may present you, we may represent you and love others as you love us. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, Church. My name is uh, Cynthia LeBlanc, and I am a member of the African American Celebration Committee, and uh, the Pastoral Council has asked us this month of November to share the announcements, and that's what I will do. Uh, this Monday, Monday Night's movie, is really the, is the hundredth movie that we've shown. And to celebrate, we're having the new Going Home Like a Shooting Star, Thea Bowman's journey to sainthood. Yeah. Everyone is welcome, and it will be on Zoom at 6 p.m. For a short time, the Ladies of Zuri of KBC, present here, uh, is bringing back the Seas Candy fundraiser at a much reduced shipping rate. So it's your opportunity to purchase. It runs from November 6th through December 2nd only. And also, the Zodico dance is coming up uh, next Saturday at 6 p.m. If you haven't uh, already purchased your tickets, they are available. Again, the ladies have the tickets, and uh, I'm sure Ms. Emma has some too. So you can get them after Mass or during the week uh, at the office. Next Sunday, we continue our celebration of Black Catholic History Month. We will welcome back Father Kwame Asunya preaching on unpacking of black spirituality on Catholicism through liturgy. Again, coffee and donuts and other goodies this week will be in the rectory since the parish hall is a polling place this weekend. And just a reminder as always, stay COVID safe. St. Columba is still keeping our masking requirement. We encourage you all to be vaccinated and boosted and to get your flu shot. Uh, we want to do all we can to keep one another safe, especially during these colder months. Uh, again, we are grateful for the health cabinet and to you for doing your part to keep St. Columba healthy and safe. And before I turn this over to Margaret, we just have to say one more time, Joyce, you said it, M. Roger Holland II. <laughs> We know him, we know you as a musical artist, we know you as a teacher, but now we know you as a gifted preacher, and you are welcome back anytime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yes, indeed, our parish hall is a polling place, which means you can drop off your ballot there, 
if you haven't uh, completed it, uh, between now and Tuesday. I hope everyone has voted or is intending to. There, we got one right there. Here's the thing, we gotta get out the vote. Oh. We've gotta do it here. And for those of you who have family or friends in other states, please call them oh, really? and make sure they're getting out to vote and that they get their neighbors and their friends out to vote. It is very important that we participate to make sure, to make sure that this right is not lost, right. not adulterated. So thank you all for being faithful citizens and we continue doing the work of being black and Catholic and rejoicing in it, <laughs> amen. We can't get enough of the prayers. <laughs> sure. We thank God and we thank us for the participation. And uh, us meaning also the people on Zoom, right? <laughs> sure. Sure. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us one Christ, peace and love to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thank you. Have a good week.